Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to divide complex numbers. Now, when you think of actually the, the operation of division, you know, division says, you know, how many times does the denominator, the number in the bottom, you know, even divide into the number in the top? Well, if you start thinking about this, you know, I represents our imaginary unit. Numbers that you know, are imaginary. They're not even a part of our real number system. They have their own number system, the imaginary number system. They, they represent numbers that do not exist um, as far as real numbers. So how can a number that does not exist in the real number system, how can we divide that number into a real number? And the simple answer is, well, we can't. So what we're going to do is rather than dividing um, the number, actually doing the division like we've done before, what we're actually going to do is we're going to work on um, actually rewriting, basically we're rewriting and simplifying it, so therefore our imaginary unit is no longer in our denominator. So basically, you know, if you remember, when we have our imaginary units, we talked about you know, i was our imaginary unit, and i squared represented negative 1, right? I, um, I equals the square root of negative 1, so i squared is, is going to equal negative 1. So basically what we can do to eliminate i in the denominator is I can multiply by i on the denominator. And to produce equivalent fractions, whatever I multiply in the denominator, I'm going to want to multiply in my numerator. So when I do that, all right, and just like you think about a fraction, you know, if you have the fraction 1 half, if you multiply by 4 over 4, as long as you multiply the same number in the top and the bottom, you have 4 eighths. 4 eighths is the exact same thing as 1 half. So as long as I'm multiplying the same number in the top and the bottom, I'm not changing the, frag I'm not changing the value of the fraction. So therefore, 3 times i is just going to be 3i over i times i, which is i squared. Well, i squared, we know, represents negative 1. Therefore, that's negative 3i. So basically, by division, what we're doing is rewriting it with a negative, um, rewriting it, um, uh, rewriting it without i in the denominator. Now let's go look at this next example. And a lot of students say, OK, well, if I have 3i, then I'm going to have to multiply by 3i. Yeah, you can multiply by 3i, but it's just kind of a lot more work because then you're going to have to reduce it. All we need to do is get rid of the i in the denominator. So again, what I'm going to do is just multiply by i over i. So therefore, then what I have here is, again, negative 4i divided by 3i squared. Um, so therefore, that's left me with a negative 4i divided by 3 times negative 1. 3 times negative 1 is going to be a negative 3. Um, so the negatives are going to divide out. So therefore, that will just leave me with a, a positive 4 thirds i. And we'll leave it just like that. All right, so now you can see we have the fun ones coming up. Now, what, mostly, what comes up with students is the most common mistake. They say, OK, well, i is in the bottom, so let's multiply by i over i. But the difference is with all these examples are these are binomials, right, where these were binomials. So now that we have a binomial, um, we have to apply, if you're going to multiply that, you have to apply distributive property. So therefore, you'd have 6 plus 1 minus i squared. Oh, I'm sorry. You'd have 1i minus i squared. So therefore, i times i, the negative i would give you i squared, would give you negative 1. But i times 1 is still going to leave you i. So you're still going to have i in the denominator, even when you rewrite this as negative 1. So what we have to do is we have to multiply by our conjugate. And the reason why is the conjugate creates the difference of two squares where our middle terms, our i, is going to divide out. So we have 1 plus i. And whatever we do in the denominator, we have to do in our numerator. Now, hopefully by the end of this, by the end of this video, um, and at least doing your homework or practice, you'll be pretty good at completing or multiplying using the difference of squares. So what I'm simply going to do is apply the distributive property up top here. So 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times i is going to be a 6i. All over here, I'm just going to multiply. Again, this is the difference of two squares. So I'm just going to multiply the first two terms and the last two terms. So 1 times 1 is 1. A negative i times i is going to be a negative i squared. Negative i squared, um, so therefore I have, let's see, 6 plus 6i six divided by 1 minus negative 1. Well, 1 minus a negative 1, 1 minus negative 1 is like a double negative. So that's really 6 plus 6i six divided by 2. Then remember, we always want to write our complex numbers in the form a plus bi. So I'm going to divide the 2 into both of those numbers here. And what I get is 3 plus 3i. And that's going to be my final answer. Okay. Over here, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now I have an addition, so the conjugate is going to be 3 minus 
8i. Okay, again, apply distributive property here. So here I have uh, 6, 6i, six and then 2i two, two times negative 8i is going to be a negative 16i squared. All over here, again, by applying distributive property here, I'll have 9 minus um, 9 minus i times i is going to be a negative 64i squared. OK, not really that much fun here. Um, so therefore, that becomes a negative 1. i squared, remember, is negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 16 here is going to leave me with a 6i plus 16 all over here. Um, that becomes a negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 64 is going to be a positive 64. Plus 9 is going to be a positive 73. All right. Then, unfortunately, see here, my 2 evenly divided into there, right? Well, here, 73 does not divide into those at all. So I'm just going to leave this as a fraction. But I am going to distribute it into each one. So therefore, I know what my a and my b i are. And then I also have to rearrange these, because I always want my real number in front of my imaginary number. So my final answer is going to be 16 divided by 73 plus 6i divided by 73. Because the 73 is dividing into both of those terms. So I'm going to rewrite it like that. All right. Um, now let's get to the next one. Now this is a very com common one. Again, just like students, uh, students always see if they have, if they see the same number in the top and the bottom, they automatically want to divide them out. Well, you got to be very, very careful when doing that. That only works when you have terms that are separated by multiplication. That does not work when our terms are separated by addition or subtraction. So I can't just say, oh, cancel, you know, divide out the, the i's and I'm left with 1 half. That's not going to work. I have to multiply by the conjugate. So in this case, the conjugate is 2 minus i. So 2 minus i. So up top here, I'm going to have to use FOIL. Okay. Um, so FOIL here, I'm going to do 1 times 2, which is 2. 1 times negative i is going to be a negative i. 2 times i is going to be a positive 2i. And then i times i is, or i times negative i is going to be a negative i squared. That's my numerator. In my denominator here, in my denominator, I have 2 times 2, which is 4 i times negative i is going to give me a negative i squared. OK, so now let's go ahead and simplify. I'm going to try to do these all vertically here. So therefore, let's see here. Um, this becomes uh, negative i squared. So that becomes negative 1. Negative 1 times neg uh, minus a negative 1 is going to be a positive 1. Positive 1 plus 2 is going to be a 3. This becomes negative i plus 2i is going to be a positive i all over um, i squared, again, is negative 1. So it's going to be 4 minus a negative 1, which would be 4 plus 1, which would be 5. Okay, But again, ladies and gentlemen, just like I did over here, what we're going to want to do is rewrite this as to 3 over 5 plus i over 5. Okay, All right, in the last example here, um, just a lot of work again. Again, the main important thing, guys, if you can at least get to this point, is you know multiply by the conjugate. 5 plus 2i. OK, then, uh, then basically all we're simply doing, ladies and gentlemen, is we're multiplying our numerators and we're multiplying our denominators. So I'm actually going to do negative 4 plus i times 5 plus 2i. Then we multiply our denominators, 5 minus 2i times 5 plus 2i. Now, to keep, the, to keep this video semi-quick, you know, um, I'm just going to apply FOIL. And since I have a little bit more space, that's why I'm doing it this way. OK, so therefore, I have negative 4 times 5, which is a negative 20. Um, negative 4 times 2i, which is a negative 8i. i times 5 is going to be a positive 5i. And i times 2i is going to be a positive 2i squared. Cool. Now, we can go ahead and simplify this. Remember, i squared is negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 will be a negative 2. I can combine these two. So it would be negative 20. Um, negative 8i plus 5i is going to be a negative 3i. And then the i squared is negative 1 times 2. So that's going to be a negative 2. Then I can rearrange these. Negative 20 minus 2 is going to be a negative 22 um, minus 3i. Okay, And then over here, I have 5 times, oops. I don't need to do this because this is a difference of two squares, right? So I need to multiply the first two terms and the last two terms. 
So 5 times 5 is 25. Um, and then over here, I have a negative 4i squared. So 25 minus 4. Remember, i squared, I'll write this one out, is negative 1. Right? So negative 4 times negative uh, 1 is going to be a positive 4. So that gives you positive 29. So your final answer is, here's my denominator. Here's my numerator. So my answer is negative 22 minus 3i divided by 29. Or if we were to break that apart, which you'll see on your test, my final answer would be negative 22 29 minus 3i divided by 29. So if your number can be simplified or divided into there, cool. If it cannot, then you know, if it's simplified, cool. If it cannot, then just leave it with your denominator divided into both of your terms separately. Thanks. Uh,